website and video from my Team Anime Universe. If you have watched some of my videos in the past, you have seen some videos from my Elvira friends, from Kush book series. But today, I want to talk to you about another exciting character. That, again, coming at you with another exciting video from my Team Anime Universe. If you have watched some of my videos in the past, you have seen some videos from my Elvira friends, from Kush book series. But today, I want to talk to you about another exciting character that we are that we call the Blue Tornado. Now, the Blue Tornado is the signature char character from that ac uh, actual book series, but he just one of many characters that we would like to discuss, break down all about the uh, uh, Blue Tornado book series, and why we want to discuss. Uh, our characters, we come and all, we always want to talk about our characters because to us, the characters are important, but to our readers, of course, you won't know anything about any of our characters. So we have broke down some of our characters from Elvira and Friends. We have broke down some of our characters from the Kush book series. And we, we do read a lot of other uh, universes from the Marvel Universe to the DC Universe the Naruto and Boruto universe, and of course, all of the Goku universes, fairy tale, and the list goes on. But by reading all of these uh, mangas and books and looking at a lot of the anime or the animation or even the movies themselves, we, we want to throw our ha uh, uh, hat in the ring and say, hey, we could come at you with some exciting characters. And this character actually was created in uh, 2013 by one of our uh, many artists that I've had the pleasure of meeting. And this artist created uh, the Blue Tornado, but goes by the name of Jamil Washington. Jamil, it took him close to two weeks to actually create this character and finalize it. And uh, because he created it from scratch, we, you know, we don't take any of our characters and plagiarize them. Uh, some of our abilities may be similar to some of the other universes, of course, because is so many is only a, a certain amount of uh, abilities that you can give your character and say hey that's what I want my character to do so in this sense our character the blue tornado I want to break down that character tell you more about why we created this character and um, some of his ability uh, so the blue tornado goes by the name of John Marsh now, John is an ex-Marine who has been on many tour duties. Uh, he loves going on tour duties. He has no children, so it makes him easier, you know, to go on those tours. Of course, he got both parents as living, and he has uh, one of many siblings, but one of his particular siblings that he loves is Jessica Marsh. And we'll get into Jessica a little bit later. But uh, now that John is done with all his uh, tours and all of his special training that he's endured, he's home back in uh, Peachtree City, and that's a universe that uh, a city that we created for our universe. And Peachtree City uh, sits in a universe which is a southern uh, map of uh, uh, of America that we created. And what makes Peachtree City so uh, different is we wanted our, to have our own Gotham, so to speak. So, you know, different characters, they have their own little city and represent it. So we, we created our own, and this one is Peachtree City. So now that John is home, uh, he's now an entrepreneur, and he, go, he goes out and assists uh, the Peachtree Police Department on different type of tasks. Uh, Peachtree City is close to 6 million people. So it's a, a very large size city, but he uh, particularly assists the southern uh, part of the of the, uh, the the southern part of the uh, the, the city. Um, like I said, John is a private eye. So when somebody come up missing, or if you want to find out if a loved one is cheating on you, or if a loved one is still alive, or a loved one is dead. You contact John and his, you know, his associates, and they go, they go out in the field and they find those things out for you. Um, 
John uh, John loves 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 his sister. Uh, like I said before, her name's is Jessica Marsh, and Jessica Marsh is a, is a scientist. She works in her own private lab. So just like John, Jessica is her own entrepreneur. Uh, on one particular day, uh, Jessica was gifted the opportunity to do some research on a blue puffer fish. And this blue puffer fish was something that was different. Uh, she had seen other puffer fishes before, of course, but what makes this one different is it's very light blue texture. Now this puffer fish wasn't that big, but if anybody know anything about a puffer fish, if they bite you, it could be very fatal. So this puffer fish had to be in a tank by itself because of the very bright, uh, bright blue uh, markings on it and the, the glow that it gave off. So because John have done so many tours all over the world, Jessica wanted uh, John to come and, you know, take a, a look at this puffer fish and see if he's seen any fish like this ever. So one day John came and uh, visit her lab. And when he went into the lab, he actually looked at the puffer fish and he told her, he said, Jessica, this, this fish is not normal. So, you know, I think you should be very careful with this fish and don't touch this fish without, you know, some assistance. Not well, you can't touch the puffer fish anyways, but don't get too close to the fish without any kind of assistance or, you know, with, with your findings. So one day, the very day that John actually went to visit uh, the lab, the lab was struck by a very powerful tornado. Now, when this puffer fish, when the lab was hit by the, the tornado, the puffer fish actually flew outside of the tank. Miraculously, when it flew outside of the tank, it bit John on the side of his arm. Now, I know it sounds strange. You'd be like, all of a sudden, the blue puffer fish just jump out of a tank and bites John. But this is our story, and we love to tell our story the way we want to tell it. So when John became uh, was bit by the blue puffer fish, let's be honest. A puffer fish bites you, or if you even eat a puffer fish, if you don't prepare it properly in the kitchen, it could be very fatal. But for some reason, John didn't die. He went through a series of tests and he survived miraculously. Miraculously, he survived. So make a long story short, this is the journey that John started to take. And when the puffer fish bit him, it altered his DNA. So in our universe, we call it evolved. It evolved his DNA to something different. So, when John DNA altered, uh, he he was rushed, and you know Jessica did a series of tests, and within these series of tests, it came to discover that he developed some kind of powers. The powers that he developed was the same thing, you know, the same abilities as his puffer fish. Now, what I didn't discuss about the puffer fish, so let me slow down and just tell you a little more about the puffer fish. When this puffer fish, because it was exposed to some strange toxins, when it was exposed to these strange toxins, the puffer fish began, uh, develop a flight and flight type ability, meaning he would try to get away from you the best that he can. But if you keep provoking this puffer fish, he can give off a tornado type atmosphere uh, in his defense, which is an underwater tornado, you know, in his fish tank or in his environment. And that is the type of abilities that John developed. And that's why we call John Marsh the Blue Tornado. So that's the introduction to the book that we are uh, preparing for all of our readers so they can, you know, start understanding where we at with our story. So when John, uh, you know, gained these abilities, he had to get away from his day-to-day -day tasks uh, for a while.
but he tried to keep everything normal and try to work inside of his uh, private eye firm. But the pain that he started discovering was, was really, really severe. But he kept going on and on. And um, Jessica was very, very uh, worried about him because she didn't want him to uh, die, of course, or to go into shock because of because they didn't know anything about this puffer fish. So regardless of the fact, John still went on with his day-to-day -day tasks. And the blue tornado is not yet. This is not his abilities as of yet. Um, the blue, like I said before, the blue puffer fish can produce underwater tornado type effects. The puffer fish produces tornadoes when it feels threatened. The puffer fish became affected when a mad scientist dumped, dumped toxins from her past experiments. Um, when John uh, became bit by this puffer fish, um, he became he he came on the radar by one specific person. And that, that guy goes by the name of Joe Flame. See, Joe Flame is a part of an organization, or he's the leader of the organization called DETS. That's D-E-T-S. And DETS is an acronym for uh, Deviation, Evolve, Tech, Skill. That's what it stands for, D-E-T-S. Deviation, Evolve, Tech, and skill. So basically, this organization background goes as follows. They want to monitor anyone with abnormal abilities. Deviation, a deviation is a person with mutant type abilities, meaning they was born with special powers, whether it altered their, um, their body structure where they look more animal, or they can turn invisible, or they can they look human and they can just do certain things. So debts need to monitor that because if you are a, a, a deviation in everyday society, you can cheat your way to the top. So this organization goal is to keep you honest. And if you're not honest, then they have the tools to you know to do their very best to keep you honest. So I'll get more into that in just a second. So like I said, Joe Flame is the leader of the organization called Debts. Joe Flame runs his organization from his submarine. The submarine is called, it's called Helios. The Helios sub is larger than the Typhoon class sub, which is the larger subs on Earth. The Helios is a, is a large sub that reaches close to 575 feet. It's also powered by two nuclear reactors, two 50,000 horsepower steam turbines. Also, what makes the Hello so important is it sits very far underground and is ran by Joe Flame and his team, very, very smart technicians and ITs that sit in front of their computer. And anytime uh, somebody that uh, pops up on their radar with special abilities or abnormal abilities, they are the first ones to want to get in close to that, uh, to that individual. Now, everybody doesn't want to talk to that to the debt's crew because everybody with this new flying flame or you know they want to be on the bad side they want to go rob a bank or they want to go you know create horrific crimes so joe flame in in debt's job is to get to those people to see who are the good people that they can recruit to be a part of uh, something that they feel that they can put together or organization to to com combat the, you know, the ones that want to do evil. Okay. So, like I said again, DETS is an acronym that simply means deviation, evolved, tech, and skill. 
Death's job is to uh, is to monitor any abnormal powers that appears on their radar. At this point, nobody knows how Death's is funded, but their job is to monitor any people with special or abnormal abnormal abilities. When you appear on Death's radar, their job is to come and visit you. In John Mosh's case, it was Joe Flame that visited him personally, because the effects of this blue puffer fish gave John Marsh such, such a abnormal power that it was so extreme that they had to come visit him. His power was very, very uh, strange to what they have seen from some of the, you know, some of the others that have been recruited. Also, I want to point out that debts also monitor any solar type of beams, meaning if you're an alien, and you, you land up on their radar, they want to visit, visit you also. Because we are not the only individuals on this in this multiplex universe. There are others that's very well aware that you are there. And that's job is to find out if you're from another universe, they want to visit you also. So you still fall into the debts plan, but but mostly they you know they deal with earthlings. Okay, so now you might be asking, can you break down more of people that falls in diff different categories? And like I said, in the Blue Tornado universe, yes, we are going to deal with some characters very similar to like other universes. And our job is to create our own, own universe. When Stan Lee and some of the others they they did piggyback and take from each other and they took certain characteristics and made it their own. For example, uh, the Human Stretch and Mr. Fantastic, they are based on the same, you know, the same type of abilities. Both of them can stretch their bodies. Both of them can, you know, uh, you know, do different things like thin their bodies out, get other crevices, sneak into different places. So they are basically based off the same type character. Now, I'm not going to sit around and plagiarize those type of, uh, you know, those type characters. I'm just going to make mine or more organic. That's just my job. That's what I'm going to do. So first of all, you have the deviation. A deviation is a mutant. Devi Most deviations are born with powers from birth. A deviation powers can be dormant from the time of birth, but those powers can reveal itself through, stre uh, through stress or extreme excitement. Now, some people powers will manifest themselves right off the back. True, I understand that. But some people powers, it's going to take a little while before they kick in. And if you get these, you know, just say like you have a power where you can absorb somebody else's power like by touching their skin. So if a person has a, a, a power of um, turning into water, and I'm a deviation, if I touch you, then I learn your power automatically, and I turn to water, but then I don't know how to turn back, that could be, you know, very scary. So part of that's job is to kept, you know, is to meet these people, to start teaching them how to use their ability. A deviation can look different than a human, for example, a mutant can look like an animal, but in, but in most cases, most deviations look like any individual that's walking around day to day. You wouldn't know that they are deviation unless you you know unless you know what you're looking for. And the way that we spell deviation is D-E-V-I-A-T-I-O-N. That's D-E-V-I-A-T-I-O-N. That's how we spell deviation. Now, the next uh, letter in the acronym of debts is evolved. Now, evolved is, is characters in our universe that attain powers with science. So in the Blue Tornado uh, uh, instance, he would be in a, an evolved person because his, his DNA evolved when he was bit by this puffer fish and this puffer fish already was a scientist experiment even though the scientists didn't know. The scientist was dumping goop from a lab 
where the puffer fish was found, and in that instance, that puffer fish DNA altered, and by biting John Marsh, which is now called the Blue Tornado, his DNA altered. So he, in our universe, is called an evolved character. And although, like I said, although John Marsh is not an experiment, he still falls into the evolved category because he was bit by that puffer fish. Next, the T and and DET stand for tech. DET monitors individuals that use forms of technology to alter their personalities. The use the use of tech suits, robots, drones. Uh, some people are taking tech, and you know they lo lost limbs. They're putting tech on their body to become androids, or you know part human. Those are the type of people that Dex is looking out for because these people are very powerful and they want to make sure that they keep them honest. So if you had a person who lost an arm and they used technology to replace their arm, but they put heat sinking missiles into the arm, then that's a person that Dex want to be like, okay, we need to monitor this person just in case we need to destroy them or destroy their arm. Or if we need to imprison them, to keep away from her, uh, harming other uh, other humans. And that's uh, part of that's job is to keep those type people honest. Now, they do have the ultra-rich that will, try, you know, that try to buy these suits and buy different things with their money, but that still have to monitor them because you don't need more technology than the technology that debts have. That's the way they feel. Now, are there other are there people with that technology, well, it's, it's remained to be seen, but we, we will keep you posted in that aspect. All right, the S and that's stand for skill. Now, just because it's a skill doesn't mean that you don't have certain type powers. It's just that these people have extra, extra training and they need to be monitored because they are very, very skilled. They can do Taekwondo, Capoeira. They can do uh, Kung Fu. You know, they are very good with their hands. They're very good with the with the uh, feet. Some use swords. Some use uh, different type of uh, weapons. And you know, some people they have the power to regenerate health, regenerate limbs. And just because they're not a deviation or evolve, they still fall into the skill category. And they need to be monitored because, like we said before, you don't want people with this type of technology and these type powers out there in the atmosphere. So Joe Flame and his his organization, they have the tech, they have the tools to train uh, the people that fall into the debt category. Also, the people that's not from Earth, uh, you know, there are certain few that's not from Earth that you know, debts have to follow. Now, we want to talk more about some of the category, or some of the characters that's going to fall under different places. For example, when John Marsh is eventually recruited, and of course, we don't want to give everything away in this video. When John Marsh is recruited, he was recruited with the aspect because of his uh, his skill, his battle skill training and how strong he is from his evolved DNA. Like really, this puffer fish really gave John Marsh the ability to, with his speed, his hand-to-hand -hand combat was already great because he was trained, but he also could produce tornado abilities just like the puffer fish. So when, John, when, when they discovered this, John was recruited to run an organization that uh, debts have, uh, you know, they've basically put the platform together because, you know, a lot of these people, they feel lonely and they feel, you know, out of place and they wanted a leader to come about. So in that aspect, it was a, a, a character that goes by the name of Darius. And with Darius, he runs this school. Yes, you might say our schools sound very similar 
to Professor X, and it may be. I, I you know, I won't doubt that. But this is the, you know, the Blue Tornado universe, and this is the way we want to run our story. So Darius, he ran this school with an iron fist. He wanted the people to come to the school to feel loved, to feel wanted. So what he did was he went and he, he bought a mansion. And in this mansion, he housed a lot of people. And with the assistance of debts, they are training everybody to be on one of one accordant for the different skill sets and different abilities at this school. So with the help of Darius, he founded the organization called the Association. But it's only one problem. The last leader of the association, he left the association because he wanted to start a family. It wasn't that he got killed. It wasn't that he was a bad person. He just wanted to start a family. So with the, with the um, agreement of Darius, he left the organization. And then by leaving the organization, what he did was he went ahead and started this organization. Okay, so this organization goes by the name of the association. Speak to certain amphibians. So he might be able to walk up to a, you know, a bullfrog and, and speak to him. It's very possible. But also that the green weld is associated with um, the, the, he's associated with the association. He's also the king in the underworld. Now, he, although he's the king of the underworld, he still have nemesis like that 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 want to knock him off of his throne. That's just part of what it is. Um, the green whale is very, very strong, but he's more stronger underwater. His number one nemesis, ironically, is a character that goes by the name of Puffle. And we will get into the character Puffle soon, but his number one nemesis goes by the name of Puffle. The green whale, he commands just like Darius with a strong fist because the rule underwater, you have to be strong. You can't be like weak-minded, but you also can't rule without a team around you. Uh, the next character that we have in our universe goes by the name of Brain Twister. Brain Twister is our number one uh, mystery solver, detective. So him and John Marsh clicks off top because John Marsh is a private eye. He has special training. So he's the go-to guy when they need to figure out certain inst instances. He go, you know, John Marsh lean on Brain Twister a lot. Uh, Brain Twister is one of the, the longest serving uh, individuals with the serv uh, association. Him and Darius have been serving or has been locked hand and foot for a long, long time because Brain Twister was given up at birth. And when he was given up at birth, uh, Darius found this out and he went and he, you know, he, he rescued him and raised him almost as his own son. Yes, Brain Twister understands that Darius is not his father, but he still, you know, he still feels that he want to uh, do the best to Please, Darius, and and the, anybody who draw, joins the association, he want to show these individuals that, you know, this is home and you can feel welcome. Okay, uh, Brain Twister's number one nemesis is Enigma. Enigma. So that name will come up again. Okay, another one of the, the characters that falls into the association uh, is Windstorm. And Windstorm is a powerful, powerful wind witch. Uh, she, you know, can can really uh, garner up powerful winds uh, at her discretion. But because she know her strength, you really have to push her to her limit before she exonerate those type of, um, you know, type of um, abilities. She's very strong, she's very humble, and her number one nemesis is called Monsoon. Monsoon is her number one nemesis. 
uh, it's another uh, character in the uh, association, and this character goes by the name of Hurricane. Hurricane loves to cut loose uh, on the water, so he's just the opposite of uh, Mon uh, of uh, Windstorm because his abilities are stronger when he's more close to water. He produces tornadoes, uh, whirlwinds, uh, cyclones all over water. He's very strong. He do have a drawback when he's over water. I mean, when he's over land, that's one part of his weakness. But over water, Hurricane is very strong. And uh, Hurricane loves to tangle with a, a, a character that we call Downpour. Because both of them have similar abilities. They love to tangle over water. Okay. All right. Let's talk about another one of our characters. We call this character Mr. Blizzard. Mr. Blizzard is a very powerful cold demon. So, yes, Mr. Wizard would be one of the characters that we talked about. Like in the Dex organization, you got deviations, you got evolved characters, you got tech characters, and you got skill characters. But, you know, uh, Mr. Blizzard is a demon, so he'll fall under the, the category that we call solar. Uh, he's very powerful. Um, he produces very, very strong uh, snowstorms, but he has a nemesis, and this nemesis goes by the name of Whiteout. Um, Mr. Blizzard has a lot of love for anybody that he calls friend. Although he's a demon, although he looks different, he loves the way his mask because he don't like people talking about him, even though he's not from this world. So he keeps a mask across his face. But the people that he calls friend, he holds them very dear to heart. And earthlings have uh, would have uh, have uh, gathered around Mr. Blizzard and made him, you know, make Earth a very strong person in the association. And he's one of uh, Darius' most trusted um, pals at the at the mansion that they have. Okay. Now we got another character in the association because we got quite a few characters that we do have uh, in this, uh, you know, in our, in our uh, Blue Tony universe. You know, uh, we came out the gate, to be honest, one of the most um, uh, growing up, I used to love the Super Friends, looking at it with my brother and my, my brothers and me and I was like, one day, I'm going to create my own universe. Because DC did it, of course. And, that, you know, when I looked at DC doing it first, and then I looked at, of course, Marvel, just before I got into the animation, uh, I looked at how the universes uh, was constructed. And also, you had Spider-Man with his amazing friends. Uh, I saw, um, I seen the Justice League and then the Hall of Justice and how they did, you know, different things. And then I saw how the X-Men did it. I thought it was pretty cool. And I said, I'm going to have my own, you know, uh, universe. And I understand that some people might be like, well, you copycatting. Well, I don't look at it as copycatting. I'm just looking at my, you know, having my own characters, putting spins on my own characters. They won't look like anybody else's character. They, they might have certain abilities. The names may be even similar. But we are running three different uh, universes on our own uh, starting out the gate in the team uh, the team Tigio uh, anime universe which is uh, you have Elvira and Friends then you got the Kush book series and you know the Blue Tornado so those are three different universes that's parallel to each other but they're very dear to me so as I read off these characters I just want to point that out that yes you may see any many similarities but at the same time, this is my own twist. Um, I didn't. I, I created uh, with the help of Jamil Washington. I created the Blue Tornado, but I'm the creator of the, the you know the storyline, the plot, and everything of coming up with the idea of him being bit by a blue puffer fish. Because of course, you know I can't have him bit by a spider. I have to think outside of the box on how I, you know, run this story and how I tell my story. 
So I thought to myself, I say, hey, a blue puffer fish sounds very, very interesting because, you know, I heard about how people, uh, it, it, you know, how people are, you know, looking at blue puffer fishes as pests. Some people, because what hurricanes, they are washed in certain places. And some people, you look at it as delicacies. They say if you cook it properly, then, you know, then it's something to, to be had. So in my case, I wanted to create uh, the Blue Tornado when I created this, this storyline. So yes, my brother Lamar Harris, he is a co-writer as part of the Team uh, Tigio anime portion of everything. He is a part writer. So the next character we want to talk about is Gail. All right, Gail is very small, but she's very strong. When I say small, Gail may be about 4'11", but she's not the type of woman that you want to tangle with because when she tangle, it may be some Gale Force winds to come at you. So yes, a lot of our characters do have certain type of elemental abilities, and that's just the way we run in the universe. So everybody won't have these abilities because some people will have, you know, hand-to-hand -hand skill training, you know, everybody that are not deviations. Um, Gale and Gus are opposites of each other. Both of them have similar abilities when um, they're sin, uh, when he's when it's detected as Gus in the area and Gus is about to blow down a building, for example, she needs to, you know, they need somebody to get in and cut loose. And the person that they send to cut loose is definitely um, is Gail, and Gail is the person that tangles with Gus. Like I said, she's four eleven. Gus is uh, much larger than Gail, but that doesn't stop her from tangling. Not only do they do their uh, you know their special abilities, but hand to hand combat is is where it's at, and that's the that's the action also. Uh, another character uh, that we have is Onyx. And Onyx goes by the real name of Raven. In the day, she goes by Raven. Um, but at, in her uniform, she goes by Onyx. She is uh, a hand. She loves to use hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, but in the field, she also can do different uh, abilities. Uh, her number one nemesis is Clamorous. Um, so they have a battle of the screams. So there's, they like little birds, the way that they go at each other, like little banshees, if you want to say, uh, because their screams are so high pitched. So Onyx and Clamorous offsets each other with the screams, and they, that's just the way that they, you know, go about things. Um, another one of our characters is the number one sidekick from the Green Whale, and this character goes by the name of Orca. So... Just like, you know, you got the, the, the you know, like your superhero and your, your sidekick, uh, the Green Whale sidekick is Orca. Orca is the sidekick. And just because he's not as strong as the Green Whale, he was trained under the Green Whale, very strong, very smart in battle. When they're uh, battling Puffer, because Puffer is a, a person that's just as big as the Green Whale, but what makes Puffer, and we'll get into that soon, is his poison. Because if he bites you or scratch you, then, you know, the poisons can um, affect you, you know, uh, you know, have a long-term effect. So um, sometimes they have to, you know, double-team Puffer because of, like I said again, the effects that Puffer have underwater. And Puffer wouldn't want nothing, to, you know, more to do than to become number one under the sea because there's a whole world under the sea and if he conquer the sea then his next goal is to try to conquer land uh that's just the way it is everybody want to be the strongest now here here comes one of our more stronger skill uh fighters that lives in the mansion or you know or come visit the mansion and this uh he goes by the name of bowman um, yes, he's an archer, you know, so 
I had to come up with my own archer. I couldn't come up with some of the archers that's already in existence, like the Green Arrow or, you know, a, a different type archers. But my archer, he does have different type arrows that he totes on his back the same way. And that's that's what I wanted for my story because I love, love, love looking at the Green Arrow. And because I love looking at the Green Arrow, I wanted to create my own. And that's what I did. So I call my character Bowman. And his bows have certain special abilities that takes up for the lack of uh, deviation powers or evolved powers that he have. So, um, yes, he falls in the skill, but Bowman actually can fall in this tech also because some of his, his uh, for example, with Bowman, he can shoot a born arrow and um, from one of his many arrows that he have. And then that arrow can turn into a drone for him. And then if he's spying on somebody or watching somebody, then that's what that arrow does for him. So, like I said, you know, Bowman has the abilities where he can fall under the tech and skill because he's highly skilled in battle. He can do the capoeira. You know, that's a, a, a style that he did learn down in Brazil. And when he learned that, that style... Uh, from his hometown in Brazil, he turned around and he incorporated those type of abilities into his fighting style. So yes, Bowman is from Brazil. He does shoot, you know, born arrows, of course, but he's very, very skilled in battle. And if I was you, I wouldn't want to tussle with uh, Bowman. Um, we have another uh, a fighter in the association, and this uh, he goes by the name of Plunger. Okay, so with Plunger, Plunger is a crime fighter. He don't want to live in no mansion, you know, because he has his own. And with Plunger, what makes him so significant is he still follow under the direction of Darius, but he's still doing it his own way. He don't disrespect Darius in any way, but at the same time, He's going to get things done his own way. Uh, he has a huge gambling problem. That's one, one thing that that's his flaw. And this gambling problem uh, then land him in debt from time to time. But he has never used that gambling problem to, to with his special abilities to ever steal from anyone. He just loses honestly. And losing honestly is sometimes not the best way to do things. Uh, like we said, Plunger is a crime fighter, huge grammar of power, but he can draw power from his dice and playing cards. Uh, so if you feel that he's being cheated, you know, he can turn the tables on you and, you know, use that same type of ability to, um, you know, to, you know, to, to make you an explosion. Uh, it ain't going to kill you if you don't want it to, but it, it can definitely put him in position where he wins, uh, so to speak. He might lose the game, but he, he's going to win the battle. Uh, that's part of what he does. Um, also, he got a number one nemesis that goes by Card Shooter. Um, the next character that we have is called Rush. Now, Rush is a deviation, but his powers were dormant for a you know, quite some time. Um, what make what make Rush so cool is he thinks he's the strong, uh, the, not the strongest, but the fastest uh, runner in the world. So in the, the Blue Tornado universe, one of the fastest runners that we have is called Rush. Um, he loves to brag about how fast he is, but he's the, the, and he loves to tell people that he's the fastest man on earth. The question is. Is he the fastest man on earth? Because the blue tornado has gained enormous strength and speed from being bit, you know, by the uh, puffer fish. And would this settle really good with uh, Rush if the blue tornado beats him in a, in a uh, run battle? Uh, that would be made to be seen once we write our story a little bit more. Um, anyways... Uh, Rush, number one nemesis, is called Flux, 
F F L U X. They are known nemesis because let's get this. They are brothers. So both of them were born with these abilities, but Rush never wanted to use his abilities for any type of crime. But Flux is a brother that did. They grew up in the same house, the same parents. Um, it's just that they never got along. So in battle, you know, these are two that, um, you know, that often fight each other in battle because one is want to be on the good side, which we call an association, and one of them want to be on another side, which we would talk about soon. So Rush and Flux are two, two nemesis. And next, we have one of our final characters in the association, and this character goes by the name of Shambles. Shambles, to him, he's the strongest there is, as he has never reached his true powers. Now, for, with Shambles by itself, he's already 6'7", as he stands. But the matter you make shambles and the matter he make himself, he grows in height and he grows in strength. So to him, he has never been, he's never reached his ultimate power and strength in battle. So because he haven't had that many to really test his power in battle in, and plus debts and uh, Darius and association they don't want shambles out because they don't want him tearing down buildings or they don't want him hurting citizens accidentally because once he get mad, yes, he got a conscience and he understands what he's doing, but the strength itself can, can put one of harm's way if he's tussling with, you know, somebody in that universe. So shambles will get a chance to test out his ability soon enough, but for now, he say he's the strongest there is. He hasn't been fully tested, but it'll be main to, you know, remain to be seen how he uh, does everything. Okay, so we talked about all of the, you know, the characters that for now that we have in the association. We talked about uh, John Marsh, who was recruited by Debts to join Darius in the association. Uh, when John Marsh was recruited, the sole goal was for they looking for a leader and they looking for a person with the, the leadership and the ability and the training. And they feel that John Marsh has those abilities because um, because all of the tour duties, all the special training that he did in the military. And also because John Marsh already has a black belt uh, throughout the military and, you know, before he went in the military and doing you know, he's a multi-degree black belt in different types of martial arts. So they feel that he's, you know, he could be skilled enough and earn the respect of some of the other characters. And, and, and also I want to point out John Marsh um, detective uh, abilities. They feel that all of those together will assist him with, um, you know, in training and training up other characters that they see fit that they will fit good in the association to battle others because everybody don't want to be a part of the association. Everybody don't want to use their new powers for good. When that set out to say, hey, we have deviations that's born with powers and they want to uh, use their, their cloak to uh, turn invisible and pickpocket people or to steal the pearls off your back. They need it they need a leader to govern over that. And will John Marsh become that leader? It'll be remain to be seen because to John, he feels that he wants to be in love. You know, that's the way he feels that he want to be. And we will see how that goes. Okay, so right now, we talked about John Marsh. So now let's talk about the foes of the association. And this way it gets murky because the number one foe of the association, John actually met this person when he stopped, stopped by his private eye firm. And this guy simply went by at that time, the collector. 
it was that time that he wanted this talisman that that was stored in um, a mansion. So this guy went and uh, he got some information from John and one of his associates that, that works at the private eye firm. And what he did was, when he found out this information, he actually found this talisman. And when he found this talisman, he, he was able to obtain the powers from this talisman. So for example, when he obtained his powers, it was from something that called the black ant. So when he obtained these powers, this guy became very, very strong and a very big nemesis to the blue tornado and the association because it was a black ant. And in our universe, the black ant is very strong and very wise. Because if you look at the military, the military gets a lot of their insight from the way ants uh, uh, govern up their communities. So the first person that we want to talk about from this organization that we call the Click. So the good guys is called an association. The bad guys is called a Click. And the very first person goes by the name of uh, Luis Rodriguez, and he goes by the name of the Black Ant. And Luis Rodriguez is a Mexican-American, and he's actually born in Peachtree City. So his roots run deep in Peachtree City, and to him, he feels that he wants to be the strongest in the world. And when he found out about the association, then he went out on his own with the, you know, with his abilities and his new scrim, and he actually purchased his own mansion, and he wanted to recruit others to go up against the association. So I did mention some of the others that's a part of the universe, so I'm going to quickly go through some of the people that's part of the clique. So I talked about Luis Rodriguez, and he goes, like I said, he goes by the name of Black Ant. Next, we have Trickster. Okay, Trickster is one of the craziest enemies of the association. He's already crazy by himself, but when he gets with the click, that's when he's really crazy. And he, he's, he's always a handful for the Blue Tornado because of his sadistic abilities. And, you know, he's, he's, he falls under the skill category, but with his tech gadgets and everything and his poisons that he's used, he falls almost besides the, the D and debts. He falls under everything else. He's very skilled in battle. He have tech. And, uh, you know, he do have some evolved abilities, but it's not like he's an abnormal uh, strong guy. He just very, very, uh, very strong. And we call this guy the trickster. Next, like we said before, we have Puffer. And Puffer is a water villain. He's half man, half fish. And he has a toxic ability. And he's the number one nemesis of the green whale. Uh, with the puffer, like I said before, you know, he has a toxic ability. If he sting you with his one of his puffers or if he bites you, because he might bite, you know, even though he's half man, half fish. If he bites you, then, you know, you can become affected. And if you don't have the, the special ointment or if you don't have a special healing ability, you most likely will die from, uh, you know, puffer abilities. Uh, Enigma. Enigma loves to pull members of the association to his wicked mazes. He's very tricky and sneaky. What makes him different than Trickster is, Trickster is a come at you kind of person. But Enigma is, you know, he's a, he's a more of a person that pulls you into his universe to get you to do things that his uh, will and base. Uh, his number one nemesis is Brain Twister. Um, next, you have Monsoon. And we did mention her before. Monsoon is the number one nemesis to Windstorm. There are two women that just don't like each other. They have similar to abilities, but from the very first time that they met each other, even as civilians, yes, they had uh, abilities, 
but it was just something about each other. When they looked at each other, they locked each other's eyes. It was like, I don't like you. And it was like, I don't like you. And from that day forward, it's going to take the, the act of uh, counseling, so to speak, to get these women to uh, speak again, uh, speak in a formal, a good formal way. Uh, next, you got Cyclone. Cyclone and Downpour take turns as they battle Hurricane. Let's just say the cleanup crew are not, uh, not happy when these two, uh, they come in battle. So Cyclone and Downpour are two people that battle Hurricane all the time. And whoever wins, it's just, you know, it's just always a toss-up. Uh, what's uh, amazing about our next character that goes by Gus uh, like I said, Gus is a, a taller woman than, than Gail because Gail is like 4'11". And Gus is close to six feet tall. But what makes Gus and Gail so interesting, they used to be great friends in high school. But their friendship fizzled out over a mere misunderstanding. And from there, it went all down here from there. Even though they were friends in high school, they both are deviations that develop similar abilities. And when they develop these abilities, they they just over this misunderstanding that that probably could be cleared up over a, a conversation. If they wanted a conversation before they went and went to fight each other, then it could be cleared up. But until then, it's there's two women that's fighting. Okay, next you have whiteout. And Whiteout is the number one nemesis of Mr. Blizzard. And just like Mr. Blizzard, Whiteout is from the same uh, world as Mr. Blizzard. They're both demons. They both came to uh, uh, this uh, uh, to our Earth under the same pod. But one of them wanted just to become part of the Earthlings. And one of them felt like, hey, we'll never be accepted because we are demons. And that's when the two fell out and went two separate ways. And one was recruited by the association and the other one was recruited by the clique. And for right now, they are both two individuals that don't like each other. Uh, as we introduce in our characters, next we have Clamorous. Clamorous is a very beautiful woman, but her love interest is a person that's actually a part of the association. And that person is no other than the Bowman. But the only problem is because the Bowman and Onyx has interacted, you know, so much together by being in the, the mansion with Darius, her his love interest is actually Onyx. But that doesn't stop Clamorous from saying, hey, I think I can get this man. And, you know, if I can get this man, then I would leave, uh, actually leave the clique. And we can go on to the sunset and we can leave all the crime fighting and everything alone forever. But if Onyx have any word to say about that, that's just not going to happen. Because, you know, Onyx really loves the Bowman. And the Bowman, he's a Brazilian guy who does the capoeira and things like that. But, you know, it's remained to be seen how's that going to turn out. Next, we have Card Shooter. Just like uh, his nemesis, the car shooter is a very powerful gambler. And also, him and Plunger have some of the same abilities. For example, both of them can do have dice bombs. And some both of them have playing, uh, you know, they can use playing cards as a, a form of weapon. Because the ironic thing is they both of them have the same abilities, but they both go and get their, uh, their weapons of choice from the same dealer. So they're both gamblers, both characteristics. It's just that they don't get along. So Card Shooter is a, a great, you know, a great uh, nemesis to Plunger. Next, you have Flux. And like we said before, Flux, one of his number one nemesis is actually uh, his own brother, which is Rush. Rush thinks he's the fastest of life. Uh, Flux doesn't care. Because actually he runs in reverse. He doesn't run, you know, uh, straight up. He runs in reverse. And even by running reverse, he's really, really fast. But what remains to be seen is Rush even faster than the Blue Tornado. 
you know, that's to be main to be, you know, seen because with uh, the blue tornado, uh, tornado type ability, he is, you know, have the ability to fly and the ability to run with wind at his feet. So it's really, uh, really uh, interesting. But Flux and Rush just don't get along, even though they got the same mom and the same dad. They are just two people that don't get along. And lastly, from my list, we have Boss Player. That's right. Boss Player is a very powerful pimp that resides on Tigio Avenue. Tigio Avenue is one, is a you know is a big time street in uh, Peachtree City, and Boss Player is one of the number one players on that street. He got his name from some of the you know the older players from back in the days, and they saw that he was a young guy that could handle his business. So they, they used to call him boss. And then over time, as over time progressed, they called him boss player. Uh, boss player has power that's unmatched by many because he's a big guy. Like Shambles is 6'7". Boss player is actually 6'9". He's actually a bigger guy. Is he more stronger than Shambles? It remains to be seen, but if you ask Shambles, I can bet you he would tell you no He's not. Uh, and as the cat is out of the bag, boss player number one nemesis is Shambles. Um, thank you for allowing us to introduce the characters that we have imagined into our uh, Blue Tornado universe, which sits inside of the Tigio anime universe. And uh, if you got any questions, please comment, like, subscribe to our channel, as there will be other videos to come. As from me and my brother, uh, we writing some very um, interesting uh, pieces from the Blue Tornado uh, universe. Uh, Lamar is one of the main writers of this universe. So if you would like to see uh, characters appear in this universe, if you like to see some storylines to appear, please let us know. Um, once again, this is Antonio signing off, and uh, hopefully we speak to you soon.